I will be talking about from our perspective of uh, how we can enhance competitiveness via sustainable energy management. Uh, I think my slide is not on yet, yeah, Dr. Lim, is it? Has it been on, my slides? Uh, already on. Go okay, ahead. thank you, oh, thank you. So let, let me um, start with a, a bit of activity for the audience, what I call as a 20 seconds soul search poll. Uh, very quickly, yeah, um, if you think that you disagree with the points that I show here, please type not us, very simple, yeah, on the chat box. First, many organizations are very concerned about energy management and energy sustainability, and many organizations provide energy management consulting services even. So, third and fourth, most organizations do not have a formal committee to manage energy. I'm talking about formal committee yeah, in your organization structure. There is a formal committee of energy management, system energy management team. And most organizations do not have formal energy management system or EMS like ISO 50001 and so on and so forth. So if you disagree, then uh, especially with any of those, even three and four, then uh, you might want to check. Type on chat, not us. Okay, so um, it looks like not many disagree with three or four. I would have expected many, many more would disagree with three and four. Well, the first two is about preaching energy management. The last two is about practicing energy management. Let me talk about something very familiar to many of us. You have got to be old to know this basically, but uh, I think this is also resonate well with uh, the younger generation. Yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The first two, good and bad, yeah, about energy management system. This is our experience. We were good at preaching. It relates to the soul search uh, poll that I gave earlier, but not good, yeah, bad at practicing energy management solution. This was the uh, practice or the experience of UTM. Like the waste management instructor, uh, then uh, if we are not good at uh, practicing energy management solution, what do we do now to solve energy management or energy issues at our organization? We typically privatize energy management at home. This is a pain. This was a pain that we went through for many, many years until we decided on something else. That was the good and bad, and that is even ugly part. You see, we have, especially UTM, extensive resources but then again, we privatize solutions, extensive resources, extensive technology, extensive people, extensive expert facility. But then again, how can we privatize solutions? This is to us, to me especially, I personally feel it is ugly. So this is the pain that led us, you know, basically these are the resources that I was talking about. Yeah, we have seven faculties and the majority of the faculties has uh, innovative solutions, research on energy management, energy sustainability. We have postgraduate students, extensive number of human resources innovating on, yeah, especially energy system sustainability. And many of these researchers come from many different countries across the world. So we have rich yeah, talents in, in UTM. Apart from that, we have endowed uh, National Research Institute, many of the research institute or four research institute, yeah, highly endowed, and uh, it is you know, they are National Research Institute uh, sponsored by the government, especially to do sustainable development goal types of research. So, let me begin with the content of my uh, speech: the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I have talked about now. Call to action: What led us to transform uh, UTM? Uh, sustainable energy management initiative and a focus today is about partnership for the goals and some take home messages. Let me relate to you what I have uh, talked about before UTM 6P Energy Star. 
in 2011, UTM made the disruptive call to drive reforms and innovation via sustainable energy management, among other things. And uh, I have been uh, one to take responsibility personally on this driving reforms and be the advisor of UTM Sustainable Energy Management and has been one of the advocates of the nations. I've been appointed as the uh, chair of uh, uh, Energy Efficiency Conservation Act for Thermal Energy by the CATSA, previously MASTEC. And I've been uh, giving myself a lot of trouble and more time than I have yeah, to volunteer myself to do all this work. Let me reflect a bit on how UTM started. It started with, uh, like many of us, has just started now energy performance contracting, projecting, or giving uh, contracts to other people to solve or privatize our contract to people to solve energy management system solution in UTM. And we did the project based until 2000. This is uh, SEM 2.0 and the, the third, yeah, phase of UTM energy management revolution came in 2011. That was the tipping point where we embraced energy management system. That time it was IMAS, but energy management system is beyond IMAS. Uh, and then we were the first organization to be awarded the three-star EMGS, yeah? energy management gold standard in 2017. Now we have moved beyond to what we call as the low carbon intelligent energy management system then beyond COVID-19 is something that we'll be talking about today. So impact of UCM SEM transformation over the years until 2018 and 2019, you will see that this is the first star, uh, first three star. Three star is the maximum star energy efficient facility UTM, winner of ASEAN Energy Awards 2012. And uh, we saved every year about two to three million based on our own initiatives and uh, homegrown talents and uh, our innovations. Now we have the most number of certified energy managers in one site, which is uh, in UTM, near close to 50 now, and we are certified ASEAN, uh, have certified ASEAN trainers and auditors. What did we do then? So I now I relate to the 6P Energy Star or Energy Sustainability Transformation that we have uh, pioneered in UTM. First is about pains, yeah? identifying the crucial pains and building purpose from there. And the most important part of organizations is developing people and champions. And then you have to have uh, programs and develop our innovative product in partnership with uh, many stakeholders, quadruple helix way and deliver performance or proof and then promote so that everybody will buy in and uh, uh, jump on board. Basically, these are the 6P energy star that we have started. They call in 21 May 2020 webinar. We talk about this yeah, uh, driving SEM of electrical and thermal energy in particular. We also pioneer in thermal energy in, a, in, in the nation, basically, and to build resilience using technology. We talk about technology as the heart of our reforms now beyond COVID-19. Innovative commercial product and solution is going to be a game changer. So basically, we talk about low carbon intelligent systems. We talk about the product that we develop, which is eSmart real time energy multiple facility energy management system that we have developed uh, through our homegrown technology in UTM. We also develop yeah, mobile apps based yeah, isolated unit EMS yeah, that you can uh, basically uh, do or control your energy, energy system from afar and from your mobile. We also talk about this advanced thermal control system developed by our mechanical engineering uh, researchers and power quality from electrical engineering researchers, IoT network from electrical engineering researchers and our process engineering uh, thermal energy in particular uh, that we develop at uh, UTM as well. So now we focus on the part of this talk today, which is enhancing competitiveness via sustainable energy management. So. My main focus today is the uh, fourth element of the 6P partnership for the goals. So this is the 6P energy star that re relates to partnership, quadruple helix way, university industry community partnership, uh, national and international. We have done this before during our experiences from uh, our uh, basically partnership to develop energy management system through Malaysia. And we have been responsible, yeah, involved in training 
energy manager and certifying energy manager all together more than 1600 of them and uh, some of our colleagues have been involved in certifying 140 end users so we have been involved in all these organizations and working together with them otherwise it will not be possible for us to achieve all this uh, uh, achievement that we have made in terms of training and capacity buildings we have trained more than 500 companies uh, across uh, many countries and uh, uh, altogether more than 1500 professional joins our training beyond uh, facility energy management more towards industry in particular we have been involved in training as mentioned we are the center for training and we develop our own homegrown master in energy management that is the first to also award not only master degree but also certification at the same time when you join as the master program students so you would be able to certify registered electrical energy manager now for the new normal yeah where there is strict control on travel and mass gathering yeah where safety and health is of paramount importance and we are saying that due to the spike in covid 19 yeah, over the last few weeks yeah, we are again going to the cautious mode and would have to be very very careful about opening and these are going to be around for this new norm is going to be around for some time so in such a situ situation how could we further thrive uh, in so much constraint yeah so that uh, we can protect uh, not only the uh, uh, facility but especially the people so this is when we thought and we have to think hard on how we could leverage on opportunities that are available abounds in adversity and build resilience beyond yeah, the facility sustainable energy management so now i talk about the 3p bottom line when we want to go for profit we have to put above all the people as well as the planet yeah the 3p bottom line so we have been doing you know, practicing sustainable energy management beyond our shores so it is beyond facility these days yeah when you want to save resources you have to think about the people you have to think about the planet above and over the profit so basically we have to extend our partner across the world a partnership across the world i will uh, relate how we have done that we were the first university to activate full 100 percent online learning on 1st april when universities like for example university of malaya started on 27th april but utm didn't look back we go full blown on 1st april to uh, online uh, teaching and learning 100 percent but we put some buffer there give some uh, uh, leeway for our uh, academics to uh, catch up with the learning remote uh, emergency teaching and learning but we initiated yeah, teaching and learning on 1st april and shift to online flexible and lifelong education basically and until now we have been consistently doing the same thing so online teaching and learning in terms of impact yeah online webinars for example forum and conferences we have done over the last almost four uh, four months or only almost four months yeah about uh, 500 and engage with more than 70 countries and we have conducted 5000 online teaching and learning sessions and with uh, we were surprised to find that more than 80% have 100% attendance if we were to do face to face less than 60% would have 100% attendance so the result is more uh, staggering and we think it was uh, very encouraging so then we do global partnership we reimagine global partnership UATM has more than 1000 university partnership across the world so we invented this UTM engineering distinguished lecture series a global partnership revolution and within three months we outreached 35 countries with RM 2 million values this would have been could need to take place within three years yeah if we did not yeah unleash our uh, online and technology revolution and uh, outreach people our contacts across the world with those 35 yeah, distinguished lecture series all these are top researchers across the world that outreach yeah, more than 30,000 people across the world so this is the initiated by UTM and the latest one will be with MIT this professor Rohit Karnik 
from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, the top number one yeah, universities in the world. So we are partnering with them to deliver this distinguished lecture series on the next uh, 27. Stay tuned for it, 28th of July. We also do the same for Academia Industry Partnership, reimagine our partnership. Yeah, and uh, just within the period of three months, we have more than 20 UTM in engineering engagement with captain of industry, something that we have taken about two years for us before. Now, within two months or three months, we managed to transform and leapfrog to a new uh, dawn of uh, captains of industry engagement. Three months, 30,000 outreach by leading uh, captains of industry. And this is one of the signature global yeah? Uh, influential ex global expert program that we did with, uh, for example, Harvard yeah, Business School, where the leading number one, yeah, uh, basically, uh, uh, professor in economics talk about COVID-19. And this is, as you can see, the familiar faces there, yeah, that Harvard Business School professor now joined our rank of Azman Hashim International Business School of UTM with Tan Sri Vincent Tan, Tony Fernandez, and that's the city side with Tansri Azman Hashim being the chair of uh, advisory council. All these uh, top notch uh, entrepreneurs in Malaysia joined the rank of uh, UTM advisory council. And I was one of the person that uh, had the uh, honor to be with them yeah, to discuss. Basically, beyond our shores, the 6P impact, I'm towards the end now, the performance, yeah, basically, 3P bottom line impact, SEM beyond, yeah, basically, 70 countries. Safe and green, RM5 million value, value and cost savings within three months eh, that we have, uh, uh, we have uh, unleashed basically through the 3P bottom line impact, people, planet, and profit. So basically, impact from April to July yeah, for the take home messages. So basically, you need to think about what you can do along the same line to reimagine sustainable energy management beyond our shores, beyond our facility to achieve the 3P bottom line. You have to start with the pain. What are the bad and the ugly things that you have uh, experienced within your organization so that it will be excruciating enough for the top management to buy in and the people to buy in? And how do you build purpose or repurpose from these pains? What are the good things that you can leverage on within your organization and SEM is definitely sustainability, sustainable energy management to achieve triple bottom line beyond your shores. Don't think just about your facility, how to engage and partner with other people to get the shift. So basically, remember the 6P that I have presented.